Yeah, I bought them. I just bought them. Oh no. I know. Return them. Make them. Yeah, get your money back. Get your money back. Yeah. I mean, it's ten. All right. Well, we're here. We're recording. So welcome to another better human, maybe better man podcast. I don't know. We're just gonna we're gonna wing it and see what happens. So why does everyone introduce themselves? Do a quick uh, intro. Sell yourself. (sighs) <sighs> that elevator pitch. My name is Natalie. I am a numerologist and I am a human here on planet Earth on a temporary visa. Yeah, so. welcome. <laughs> on a visa. I love it. Temporary. My name, is Arm- <laughs> My name is Armando Rivera. I'm a comedian and just digital content creator. Also human. Uh, identifying. I don't know what I actually am, but. Uh, Non-binary human. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> non-planetary basically planetary so. yes <laughs> you're also the proud owner starter of a new agency Mark yeah agency. of a podcast agency we don't have a name agency. yet do we we're not, we're, not, we're not strictly a podcast agency we already talked about that oh hey, just agency just media right. Mar- marketing multimedia media agency, agency. meaning we can help businesses or individuals with their content with their back end yep. with everything under the sun and I'm calling I'm a founder CEO of Wild Foods uh, podcaster human father overall badass mofo that people want to <laughs> hang out with and be like <laughs> that humble I had, I, <laughs> i'm the least humble person you know I, but, you but know i come at it from a perspective of i'm only telling the truth though mm-hmm. like i it's based on fact like i <laughs> there's people there's people that have done more than me and i look up at those people i have no jealousy but what <sighs> i've done and what I'm able to do, I'm super proud of. Like I earned it. I spent I've spent blood, sweat, toil, tears, time in jail. I've done it all. I earned it. Wait, you spent so, time in jail? That was like twenty four hours, but it was but it was hell. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it goes on the right. It was actually like thirty hours actually. No no bail stuck in there until first appearance. I had to wait until like 8 a.m. for a judge to see me and why was it a weekend? You did you get put in on the weekend? weekend? No, it was because of I don't, I don't know why it was like two offenses because they lumped things, things together. And so like, you oh, couldn't get fun. out. There was like no bail for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. The, wow. the, the, the justice system isn't good for people without money, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what? I actually, th- I think they racially profiled me. <laughs> you want to know why? Because Please. This, so, so yeah, you can't be white, white, uh, racist or, or, or sexist or moneyist or whatever against, uh, against white people. Right. Right. Well, right. I was staying in line and first appearance was a bunch of, of us hard ass <gasps> criminals in line waiting for the judge to see us. Yeah. <laughs> and, Try to tell the story without laughing, please. What okay. a gangster. Yeah. And I'm there in my jumpsuit and everything. And, uh, there was like three, three dudes in front of me, all of which had done serious crimes. Like one was like armed robbery. His bail was like 10,000. Yep. Right. Other guy, whatever domestic Mm -hmm. violence. Like he beats somebody or whatever gets to me. My, my thing is, I mean, it was dropped. So like, you know that, but they didn't know that, but it it was a, I guess it was considered a felony. No, no, it wasn't even a felony. It was like a misdemeanor or something. Right. And I don't know, but my bail was $50,000. Okay. I want, let's get the P because they thought I could pay it because they, because they probably thought I could pay it. Yep. I'm not trying to pry, but like, I, I am curious to know what the hell you did that would warrant that's for that. That's yeah. bad. Uh, 50 G's. You have to put like a house against that. Well, that's so easy. Bail bondsmen's what they do is they just charge you 10%. Yeah. So my mom had to come, my mom, my mom had to come out with, come up with 5,000. Yeah. Wow. They pay them. And you get and it back, right? I don't think we get the 5,000 back. Like. You might get like a refund. You might get some of it back and then you pay like a fee or whatever. Right, right. But like there's – I don't really know how it works. But yeah, we had to come up with 5000 oh, uh, What I did was – I haven't really talked about this a lot. But it was a situation with my ex-girlfriend who was um, not letting me be, following yeah. me around and like coming to places she shouldn't have been. And like things kept escalating, escalating, es- escalating. And uh, it's <laughs> – there was eyewitness accounts about – about what happened that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah. Like, like they wow. said, I mean, so here, I'll give you an example. Uh, somebody said that they saw me beating her to a bloody pulp. Oh my, oh my God. God. Yet there was no actual blood anywhere in her body. Right. So that yeah. should tell you something. There was, that should tell you something. 
right? Yeah. And also the charges were dropped, so that should tell you yeah. something, right? Yeah, yeah. But like there was a bystander that said, "Oh yeah, I saw him beating her to a bloody pulp." That's funny because like, in, in in those cases, to get those charges dropped, that means they have to be so far from the truth. Yeah. yeah. Because a lot of a lot of times, you they know, also had eyewitness testimony. It was like, yeah, yeah, that has to be like the, the what they found must have been like, yeah, this is just this is probably all a lie. We have to because a lot of times those cases don't get thrown out. A lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Well, even when there's minor, minor stuff. Yeah. Like it, one of like they tried to charge me with a bunch of things and like a couple of them got thrown out. And like one thing we like agreed, we like settled to some stupid thing. And my yeah. lawyer did that just because like going to, to save court you. is very expensive. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, so um, I think all in all it cost me like $12,000 and I, and this is before I had money. So $12,000 is like yeah. a, lot, a lot of money. Yeah. And and then 36 hours in jail or 30 hours in jail and like traumatizing experience. Like, and, and guess who called the cops? Yeah. Well, you, I did. I called the cops. Yes. That was your mistake. Yeah. I know. That, my... I'll never do that again. You uh -huh. stab me in the wow. head and I'll just uh -huh. take it out and I won't call the cops. Pretty yeah. much. Oh, or leave so... it in, leave it in and walk to the hospital. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 Or no, Uber, th Uber to the hospital. Yeah. That happened to my, my dad. Like he, my, uh, my stepmother like threw a laptop at his head. It was his work laptop and he called the police and they had my father removed. Oh, I was God. there. I oh was there. God. I was like, oh my God. And he was like dodging her, like running around the apartment and they called the cops and she was like, yep. he was what? punching me. He was punching right, but, me. In but, my face. but feminism, right? Fem feminism, <laughs> right? Right. I don't think that's <laughs> feminism. <laughs> I think that's just no, but that, I'm that's saying... crazy bitch syndrome. <laughs> yeah. But what I'm yeah. saying is that's the narrative that like the world's yeah. so unequal or whatever, but it's like, yeah. Okay, it's no, not, it's not as yeah. simple as no, that. Right. Also, look at the custody in, in court, the courts, right? Yeah. Women, women yeah. Lose custody, even if they're like crack fiends, they get custody and like yeah. child support a lot of times. My like, dad was oh, making yeah. like, I think like 90 grand on his own. And this is in Florida because he's an engineer. That's a lot of and money in Florida. <laughs> yeah. He was making, oh yeah, he's like a, a baller. But my, uh, my, my stepmother was like trying to get custody. Oh, you over. Are you still there? Dang it. Yeah. I was like, I'm yeah. <laughs> Say it again. You're ball he was a baller and then what? Uh he was a he was like a baller and then uh he was trying to get like at least a week, like every other week with my with my siblings. And um the court almost didn't give it to him. And I, she made dude. like twenty grand a year. And he's like, I have the money to take care of them. Like he's like, I don't get it. And like he had to take photos of his house and it was crazy. Like to make sure that it was livable and like she lived in this tiny apartment and he, yes. he my dad owned a home. He's like, I want my kids, you know, it was, it was crazy. If the government ever intervenes with my kids and I'm fortunate that I have a partner to which that's never going to happen. But yeah, if they yeah. did, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling some vigilante shit. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. just, I'm just letting the world know the universe know that you don't fuck with my family. Like I will yeah. fucking destroy yeah. you. Yeah. So, yeah. This, uh, anyways, Natalie, tell me something that you're, <laughs> that you've been doing. How you, how are you? Wow. <laughs> this, is well, episode. this is a good I, start. <laughs> I've been uh, staying out of jail. Um, well, that's trigger, good. That's, yeah, you know, trigger, that's, yeah. With this group of ruffians, that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> you know, this is like a thug posse right here. I know. Um, yeah. I've been detained. He's been arrested and put in jail. Look at this. Actually, I've actually had a gun held to my face by a police officer because what? he thought I was one of the people that were they were looking for. Yep. Uh, okay, it was a weird. Sh Do we have time for this? Because this is oh, like. Listen, we're here. We're here to talk about. I mean, I promise we'll still have some actual nuggets about how to be a better human. But right now, <laughs> right now we're talking about, about how we can be a how to not be a better human as an example. <laughs> I, I don't even think I've ever shared this story with anybody, and it's like so wild. Okay, so like back in my high school years, I was like all like super punk, had chopped off my hair, had like spiky really? wow. red bright hair. <laughs> and had piercings and all this stupid stuff. So my family and I were coming back from dinner and I was in the back seat. I was like, oh, this is so stupid, family time. And when before we got to our house or our apartment, when, as we were getting there, we saw that there was a lot of like police, um, police cars everywhere. And there was like a helicopter. And we we're like, what the hell is going on? So everybody was in a bad mood. We get out of the car and my mom's like okay do you have the keys and i'm like no i thought you had them and we're all asking each other nobody has the house keys or the apartment keys so we lived on the second floor so we were like okay how are we gonna get in you guys like there's just that one window we right. had to pull up one of those industrial trash cans 
And my mom was like, you and your stepdad are going to get up there and going to climb up to that window and open the door. So I'm like, okay. So my stepdad's a scaredy cat, but he's taller than I am. So I was like, you know what? You're going to have to jump on this giant trash can and I'll hold it so that it doesn't roll back. So I'm holding this trash can and then we see cops running around and we're like, what the hell's going on? My stepdad finally got up to the window. His feet are dangling out. And I'm holding the trash can and I just hear a phrase, put your hands up. And I'm like, oh my gosh. and I literally said, what the fuck? Who do you think you're talking to? And I yep. turned around. I'm sure I look like a, like a crazy mask, right? Cause like spiky hair, dressed in black, piercings, and I'm holding a trash can. There's a man climbing into a window <laughs> and the cop gets really close to me. And I'm like, if I let go of this trash can, <laughs> he yeah. falls. You know, oh, yeah. like, he's, like, yelling at me, and they were not very nice about it. And no. so I had to, like, put my hands up, and I'm standing there, and my mom's, like, such a, she's such a boss. She comes out, she's like, man, put that effing gun down. What the fuck do you think you're putting together, my daughter? And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, you're mad when somebody else gets mad at me, but you can be mad at me all you want. Right. It, it was a mess. Everybody starts yelling, and I'm like, this is not good. There's a... There's like a gun being pointed at my face. I know. Everybody I know. It, Like it was your place? Like what? What? Yeah. My mom was like, that's our fucking apartment. She's like, what's wrong yeah. with you? Go look for the real person and blah, blah, blah. She's like yelling yeah. at everybody. They never Where apologized. Was this? this was in my hometown, Huntington Park, which is like oh, so yeah. terrible. <laughs> so Hun- Huntington's Orange County, right? No, no. That's Huntington Beach. That's the nice side of LA. Oh, Huntington yeah. Park is LA County and it is yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. So you're right. dealing with LAPD, which is like next to the NYPD was like, they're like the two biggest corrupt oh, uh, oh my God. police departments in the entire <laughs> world. Like <laughs> it, it's insane. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you ever get pulled over by LAPD, just shoot yourself in the face. That's all you got. Yeah. That almost it, it, it's bad. It's really bad. Yeah. But then you can't post about it on Twitter. No. <laughs> you can yeah. It's censored. Them, and, you're like, yeah. Oh. Schedule a tweet. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm about I'm about to shoot myself, but blame it on the cops. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, so well, that's yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Did your yeah. fla- yeah. did your life flash before your eyes, and did you reevaluate everything that you've done to that point? And was it your yeah. epiphany moment? I was like, man, I got to do something different. This isn't right. working for me. I don't want to live here for the rest of my life in this city. And I did. It. I was like, I'm going to get the hell out of here. Kind of. Was that not- was that a pivotal moment? That 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 experience. It kind of, it, it kind of wasn't, it kind of wasn't because I was such an aggro teen and I was so over everything and I, I really did. Yeah. I was super apathetic. I was like, whatever. It's just another yeah. shitty situation in life. Yeah. Well, like, it was so, it just didn't phase me. I was, I, I think it should have, but it really yeah. didn't. I was yeah, just like, I think fun. that's why I never talked about it because it, it wasn't, it didn't seem significant. But now that I'm looking back, I'm like, I had a gun pointed at my face yeah. by a cop. <laughs> It's funny because Colin and my wife is too very much like when growing up because you were like that too, right? Colin, you're like kind of like darkness is dark type thing where you were like, no, I just, know. I was, I, I rebelled. Yeah. Same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah my wife I was kind of didn't dress in way. black or put eyeliner on my face. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> my wife was like a, I like emo kid. and I liked, I liked uh, emo music and everything. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like we're we're like looking for tickets for like my chemical romance and stuff. It's great. <laughs> no, do hey, which was an amazing concert. Cheeto's great. Amazing concert. Yeah. So, so does anybody have anything um now now that now we want to talk about how to be a better human, right? So we have any anything that we've been uh doing or thinking or or also we could talk about actual things we've struggled with in the present moment. Oh what yeah. Do, and Let's maybe we could that. talk about also relationships. This is something that I've been thinking about and this can, this is a good topic, Shit. I think. So this Shit. is how I feel. So not, not, uh, not physical relationships, Natalie. So, uh, uh, y- you know, single life is treating you just fine. You're okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I'm talking about, uh, friendships primarily, actually. Mm-hmm. I feel like this, this is, this I'm feeling. So I'm 35 and be 36 this month. And, I have financial security. I, I can I can pretty much work as little or as much as I want. And what I default to doing is just working because that's like easy to just fill my plate up with work. But like, there's always that underlying kind of hole where it's like, is my social life enough? Am I am I investing enough in people? Like, I don't really meet a lot of new people. 
am I just like relegated to only people I've met thus far? And then I think about people I've met this far and a lot of them are in Florida or around the country or world or whatever. I don't spend a lot of time with them. I don't talk to them as much. A lot of them actually it's on me to call them or they don't call me or whatever. And that's kind of something a lot of people struggle with. So it's like a biological thing. I don't want to take it personally. Sometimes part of me does take it personally though. It's like, Hey, I'll call you four times a year. That's fine. But can you call me once a year? Like, is that a reasonable enough reciprocity ratio where like, Hey, great friends who grew up together, but you can call me every so often. I'll also call you more, but like, there's gotta be like a certain level of reciprocity. And so that, that itself is a topic we could talk about, but mm. I feel like our culture today is one where like I'm in Austin, it's a busy city. It's like you have people you're meeting, you know, I, I meet people and I cultivate relationships, but you might spend two hours with them at a time and you might do that four to six times a year. And they're like your friends. Some of them are like slash acquaintances. Some of them are like friends, but it's like, where's that deep connection? Because you're not spending hours a day like you did when you were younger, your friends, your college, your roommates, like when you had just all that time with people and it was just a completely different experience and a different deepness and richness that you reach. Um, I feel like in our modern world, especially as you become adults and you have kids and you do all these things, like that's very much missing. And I think it's even harder for men because men aren't naturally as social and they have to kind of go outside themselves to cultivate the relationship. Yeah. You know, whereas women are just like maybe a little bit more naturally social or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. So I feel like I'm trying to figure out how do I want to cultivate my relationships? How do I want to balance like new people and cultivating relationships with them versus old that I've had for a long time and making sure I'm cultivating that as well and like maintaining that mm -hmm. and not being too egotistical about it. Like, why am I always the one calling or why am I always the one visiting in Florida? Why aren't you coming out to Austin, et cetera? That's where I'm at. That's something I'm struggling with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will open the floor. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so I, I don't, in, for me, like I've always kind of been very solitary. And so it's difficult for me to maintain relationships, friendships, because I, something that triggers me a bit is when people become really needy. Um, and so when you, and I don't know if this is like a, a, a female thing, but usually when females connect, it's like, oh my God, BFF. And if I can't uphold that because women have this expectation, and I, yeah, I always right. tell people when, I, I think I mentioned this last time, like the guarantee with me is that I'm at one point in your life going to disappoint you. So just like a <laughs> warning label <laughs> outside, you know? But um, so I'm a kind of person that like, okay, cool. We can socialize, we can connect, but then I'm okay. Like I can go and do my own thing and be on my own. Whereas some women really want to continue to maintain that relationship and like call and text and like get together. Sometimes I don't operate like that. So I feel mm -hmm. like I'm a little bit more on the masculine side with that. And mm -hmm. so it, it does become challenging for me to maintain certain friendships or relationships. Um, mostly because I tend to disappoint or people think that I'm not available enough. And so yeah, well, sometimes I, I read it. Yeah. I don't think this point's the right word. And I think you gotta be careful because you're, you can make that a self-fulfilling prophecy, mm, right? Okay. Like I think yeah. it needs to be more around expectation because generally, yes, people create expectations. We all do this in different ways. Uh, romantic partners, friendships, family. We all have this idea of like how often things should happen or if they do this and I do that and they don't do this, they don't reciprocate. That's what I was talking about. That's that primal natural, uh, it's the tribal instinct built into our species through hundreds of thousands of years living in small groups of humans. Like you're supposed yeah. to reciprocate when someone does something for you because that was conducive for survival of the tribe. Right. Yeah. And right. you're also only supposed to basically maintain relationships with people in front of your face. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. We could not have done what we're doing right now 10 years ago. No. Oh yeah. Like you would have to have been in person. Yeah, the best right. we could have done would be, would have been a phone call. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And even this is like, it's really great, but it's still, it's still miles different from being able to be in physical proximity in the With same someone. room. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, uh, the question I had for you was what about men? Like, what about guy friends? Is it, do you have like more flexibility there? Cause they're maybe, they're, maybe they're less needy or do you not have a lot of guy friends or, um, yes, guys can be needy too though, by the way, the guys right. can be needy. So too. then, then oh, yeah. they develop this idea that it's a little bit more than friendship. And oh, of course. That's, that's, I'm that's like, the question. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, why can't we just be friends? And I'm a person that it, even if it were to, if there's an expectation of it developing into a relationship for me, we have to be on a friend level first. It ain't going to mm -hmm. just be like, yeah. jump in and do that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, but that, that is, um, 
So I don't know. I'm just not really, <laughs> I don't know if I'm really great at maintaining friendships, but you know what? I will say that this whole pandemic, pandemic, whatever, um, has actually provided an opportunity to connect at the level in which I'm best at, which is more of a, a mind connection, a head to head, mm. as into just heart to heart, which eventually does develop to heart to heart. But mm. because we all have this common experience that we're all going through, right? So we have found a different way to connect on deeper levels, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is the, the bond or the glue that really is keeping a lot of friendships or relationships more intact. Mm -hmm. But it also Do depends you... on the people that you surround yourself with or the like-minded people that you um, converse with or engage with, right? Yeah. Do you ha Do you, are you on social media a lot with your relationships? Um, like do you say connected a lot or like medium or a little bit or? Um, I've actually developed some really good friendships through social media, but we mm -hmm. maintain the friendship outside of social media. Like we'll call each right. other. I've actually oh, talked to some people for hours and I'm like, mm -hmm. wow, I would never imagine myself on the phone for hours because mm -hmm. I would be like, I got to go do stuff. I got to do this. But well, do you, do you hang yeah. out with people in real life then? Like in real are you life. a shut in? Are you a hermit? <laughs> I, I am. I am a little bit of a hermit, but I've actually, like I said, I've actually had people like fly into California. So like we can hang out or drive out to California and we wow. end up hanging out. And I was like, this is so cool. So now I'm guys? like, you know, no, no, no. They've been females. Okay, good. Oh, that's, that, now that's impressive. Right? Yeah, because guys, I would already, I would the guys, that's an expectation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now the, the girls, that is truly like, you might yeah. have met. You your need life. to hang on to those people. Yeah, yes. those are good people. Yeah, 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 and I'm actually going to... Or they're to escaping be... their problems. You never know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As long as they escape their problems through you, then it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, and I've actually considered flying out to their home state, too, to just visit nice. with them and well, stay with them. Well, come to Austin. Them. Come hang out. You know, it's funny you say that because um, there is somebody in Austin, or not in Austin, but in Texas also, uh, that I've connected with very uh, deeply with, and she's been a great mentor to me, and especially with the like whole... like spiritual community which i don't call it spiritual anymore but the com the community collective i guess so yeah you should come out i mean yeah come out anytime I'll help yeah. texas is stay. texas is where Thank everyone's you. going everybody yep. yeah yeah yep. I, I mean it's yep. gonna be amazing for the next like 50 years and then it's gonna be not then we're gonna find the next place to go oklahoma well <laughs> yeah hopefully we'll fi hopefully we'll fix all that with bitcoin um yeah what about your mind how what is your relationship situation like um because i feel like this is my my ob observation i could be wrong and so correct me but it seems like you stay home a lot and you spend a lot of time with your wife yeah, yeah. we don't really go anywhere one because most shit is closed where we live so there's really not much Why else to do there? right because no, um we uh so besides that i mean we're very much uh home bodies when it comes to like just working as much as we possibly can and like we have so many things that we've wanted to get off the ground for ourselves and, you know, now working with other people again. And, and so we're trying to like find the balance of, of just that and also trying to fit in because we, are, you know, I'm not great at, re you know, relationships either, even with people I've known for a long time. Um, and I think that's just cause like sometimes I can worry about little things too much where I try to figure out, Sometimes I don't want the big things to slip, you know, like trying to figure well, out what do you mean? But what's an example of both those and how do they affect like staying in touch with people? A big thing would be like a work situation, uh, like like making sure that, you know, one of my biggest goals is just working for myself, essentially like having autonomy to be able to be like, I take this work. I don't take this work and stuff like that. And also like trying to get things off the ground, like uh, my own personal things like comedy, trying to write and, and making sure I'm performing as much as possible. Um, things like that. So you and think the, that gets in the way of your relationships or like you can't, yeah, of course them, you have to have time for both there. You know, you, you, you have to cut out time. Like even when I dated my wife, I had to like put, put not stuff on the back burner, but like make time for that. I had to actually fit that time in there. Well, of course, but you have to do that for any, at any point in your yeah. life. And I think that's part of the problem is that we have the society we're in and, and the things in front of us, we can fill up our time always. Like you're, people aren't really bored anymore because there's always something else to do, like some new yeah. thing, right. right? So that's also pulling people away from relationships, especially long distance ones, because long distance requires an extra effort.
Yep. Like you have to like mentally go above and beyond what's like normal or easy. Like, oh, hey, you're you live in the same city. At least we can like meet up sometimes. That's easy. Mm -hmm. But like right. long distance is like <clears throat> you got to call someone. You haven't called them in months and it feels awkward. You have resistance to it. You're like, whatever. You know, what I'm trying to do with that, because I feel it like too, is like just rip off the band aid. This, like, whenever you feel resistance and you have the idea to do it, that should be the sign that you should actually do it that day and not skip it at all. Like, don't. Damn. I also. I also feel like there's a balance too, because I feel like, you know, I have, I don't know. I'm, I'm obviously I'm still young, but like sometimes I feel I don't feel the need, not even the need, but like the yearning, where like what I'm doing at the at this point in time is the right thing to do, you know, rather than being like like calling people up where I live and being like, you guys want to get a drink or you guys want to go hang out. Like I actually feel good about what I'm doing at this point in time. Um, but they're not they're not mutually exclusive you're 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 talking at, at, about them as if they're they're either ors mm -hmm. right and i understand because i grew this company and i purposefully became less social and then now that i have time and i have a team and i can like just have way more freedom mentally and physically i'm like okay now i need to solve this problem i should have mm -hmm. been cultivating relationships the entire time and like it's not like I stayed at home all day. Like I didn't pull a Natalie. Like I was, uh, it me. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I, Natalie, I, we're I, in the I same boat. Things. I still I did mean, things. I also had employees. And so I interact, I with, interact with people, but mm -hmm. I, but I didn't go out as much and make sure to like have like friendships and you know, a lot of like, again, a lot of my friends are in Florida. So I still, I'm doing the long distance thing. Some of us talked more or less and some of them, some of them had longer gaps in between. Mm -hmm. Right. But, I should have maintained it the whole time. And mm -hmm. yes, I think when you're younger, it's easier to forego it, right? Like when you're in that young adult mode, you're like, you know, goals, money, whatever. <clears throat> but there's a t tweet I saw recently about how like, like money doesn't, isn't going to solve you or fix you or, or, or fulfill you. Right. And that's true. Mm -hmm. And most people, if all they did was cultivate a solid group of friends, like a solid trusted network, that that would be the most important thing for their long-term fulfillment and happiness, regardless of money they would have or not have. And I, like that hit home because I feel like I might've missed some opportunity over the past five years. And so I'm trying to fix that now. But what I'm struggling with is like people who, who wants to hang out, who wants to like spend the time to do that? Like, cause mm -hmm. I feel like, like I said, we all are getting pulled to these other things. So it's becoming harder and harder to even find people that are willing to do that. Yeah. And it's hard because I feel like there was this comedian I like, and it was Taylor Tomlinson. And, uh, she was like, I went to a wedding this weekend and i i knew that the bride and groom weren't gonna make it because like they weren't gonna make it past like a certain amount of time because they had 20 people in each of their wedding parties and you know I, you know what i mean like they had they had like there's 40 people in the wedding party like bride groom bridesmen groomsmen Oh, and I mean, like I, on each side of the, the yes. thing, there was, and they're like yeah. all dressed up. So yes. that's why. So that's a lot of people, obviously. But that's why fucking is ridiculous? That, why does that mean they're not going to make it? Because if I I truly feel like there, you only really need a few people. Because if you think about, even if you do, and if you base it on like how we used to be ancestrally, you lived in a certain place for a certain amount of time. You knew a few people and you know those people for like the rest of your life and some mm -hmm. of them died or some of them moved and that's really about it. And I feel like that's still stuck with us as in our biology where yes, it's like, we don't need a huge fr friend group, but we need yeah. deep, deep connections with a lot of people. So again, why would a, with lot, a lot of people? people, what did I say? Did I freeze? <laughs> you said deep, deep connections with a lot of people. I was like, that was a long no, pause. <laughs> I meant for a long time. Yeah, 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 of deep, course. Deep con meaningful connections for like ever if possible. Yeah, right? yeah that, if you can, that's yeah. That's natural and essentially appropriate. Yeah. And I think also where we de derive the most satisfaction and fulfillment. But again, how does having a lot of people in their group mean they won't last? What? How does that uh, apply to the relationship? What did she mean by that? I think that's uh, having too many friends can stretch up or, or quote unquote friends, you don't actually have those meaning like those sh the few meaningful connections. Oh, you so just you're kind of like spread yeah. thin among people, you know, and like, oh my God, there's this person and that person and they're my best right. friend and they're my best. And it's like, that's literally not possible. 
Yeah. You know, like you, you, yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> so it, it, it's indicative of people that are likely to have more shallow relationships rather than Absolutely. deeper relationships. Absolutely. They're more and fickle. And that's therefore why the relationship itself yeah. is more likely to be shallow. Correct. Rather than they're deeper. more yes, fickle I, I and, and their mm. whole identity is tied up in their friend group and things like you see people like that yeah, like or people, how many people you know or like yeah status, it's so weird cloud chasing cloud chasing shit it, it's so weird and they're like oh yep. my god my best friend so i think most people it, are like that dude most people chase cloud we should actually talk about that because i have friends it, like that it's a very high school clicky um right and they don't grow out of it <laughs> and they don't it's it's hilarious to see them when you go out as an adult and you're like oh my god you're still that person and, but, so i i guess that would leave me with the conclusion that I feel like I'm just focused on the people I've known for since since a certain time. Right, but you the know? question here, the, and I would have said I'm the same way, mm -hmm. but I feel like my o older friends are probably not on the same page as me. Yeah, or it's going to be one sided. So the question is. Do I put up with that, overcompensate, pick up their slack, which generally yeah. I do, so whatever. But then it's like, should I also be meeting new people and cultivating new relationships? I think right? it's a mix. But I definitely think it's a mix it, of both. I think I think it is a mix of both. Yeah. But but with the new people, what I'm finding mm -hmm. is it's harder to get even the amount of time necessary to develop deep relationships. Because yeah. like, oh yeah, let's go get sushi. Two hours, let's talk. And then bam, I gotta go, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Like, and everyone gets pulled back into their isolated, like do my own shit life. Yeah. Right. Where when you had a roommate and you're like 21 and you could literally sit on the couch and like watch Netflix and play video games for fucking hours on end and develop yeah, a yeah. different kind of connection. <laughs> you don't have it's that true. today. You know, no, it's, it's either, funny. It's either that or you hang out with losers that love to do that. And like, I don't yeah. really want to be friends with them probably. And, and that's all they do. It's funny because Natalie, you're laughing, but like genuinely I have two. And it's funny because I'm, I'm lucky enough where like there's certain people and even my own. I think I, I don't have enough. I don't like cultivate too many outside relationships because I grew up in a very tight knit family and some of the younger generation actually like kept their shit together and removed some of the uh, negative bullshit from the family. And we all kind of in a, we were in the same mental space. We're all, we all wanted to work. We all had this importance on like not letting negative bullshit, like cloud our judgment and like, you know, understanding when people don't visit, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. especially from our cultures too, oh, yeah. um, you know, so like, it was interesting. What do you mean our cultures? You mean you mean you you excluding white people culture? Uh, no, I mean uh, I think it's just poor culture too. I think it's just people with like their okay, family has a poor background because yeah. like you by no means come from money. I I'm not gonna assume that you do or don't, Natalie, but I, I definitely yeah, don't. Definitely. Yeah. Don't. So like, there's something weird about that that tight, close knit, like working class, lower middle class culture of of family where they're like family is everything and then but they're also but like any shitty family. to each other depends. of course of course like you could have that in all socioeconomic spectrums right I, I would say it's just whether it's a tight-knit family or not i mean you have families where they have lots of money and the parents aren't involved but you also have families that have lots of money and like the the families that they do everything together they're a unit you know but like, i think the biggest the thing was like what you said where i it was really interesting like coincidentally and possibly you know for for reasons beyond my understanding that there were younger people there are people close to my age and my family that like progressed and matured the same way i did so we're all still very close and like whenever like they fly out here I, whenever i'm out there we're always together um and that doesn't always happen in families because you're you know they're separate people but um beyond that like i have you know, I have friends that I've I've known for a long enough time. There's there's it's interesting the amount of people that I've known for a decent enough time who have remained consistent and more than that have grown. So that's why I don't go out of my way to like add more people. But like there's been like a few people like like the the joke about the video games thing. Like whenever I I want to play video games, I know like the two people I can call. I can call <laughs> my buddy Phoenix. He's always on. We we literally just like bullshit Yakim? online. Shakim? Huh? Shakim, Shakim, Yakim. What's 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 the Phoenix's first? Yakim Phoenix or whatever it is. is that Joaquin? Joaquin? Joaquin. Oh my god! I'm that like, who is this made up person Joaquin. that you're talking about? He said Jaquin. Ja that is the whitest thing I've ever heard, Colin. Okay. Yeah, you put yourself out there. How do you actually say his name? Joaquin. 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 Yeah. Joaquin. Joaquin. 
Joaquin. Joaquin. It's funny because Joaquin Phoenix is white. You guys live in his, L.A. You fucking follow celebrities and shit. His I don't parents, pay attention to this crap. His parents, I know. <laughs> his parents lived in Puerto Rico for like a year, and they named their kids Spanish things. It was so funny. Nice. Wow. Nice. But um, yeah, no, the uh, but my my buddy, his name's Phoenix Washington. Shout out, man. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's a voiceover actor out here. So we'll hop on and play a couple games and just bullshit. We'll just have fun, and that's kind of like you know, once in a while we try to see each other, but we both work. Uh, quite a bit, but we at least put like whenever I'm online, he'll add me to his like like to his you know game party, and we'll jump. I'll jump in, and we'll play some games, and hop off. And then I got another buddy that like I go see movies with because he's uh he has a production company. Uh, my buddy Andy. And... Oh, so only people that have production companies can watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just try to promote some clout there. I know a friend. Well, that you know has what? I'm production you, company. We only you know watch his I'm... movies though. Only the movies that his studio produces. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor, oh, Colin? Jean Claude then... Van Damme? <laughs> or no, Jean Claude Van Damme is not bad, okay? I grew up with Jean Claude oh, Van Damme. Awesome. And... Oh, my God. Look, Blood Sport. No, but... Blood Sport. It, you, you yes. know what the most. You know I grew what the, up on the, that. The, the through line is like a lot of people are people that I've worked with in some facet that our working relationship ended up becoming more. That's what it always starts off as. Like, wait, uh, you were you were working with people fixing faucets? Is that what you said? <laughs> I hate you so much, dude. I hate you so much. So, do you have any white friends, or is this all all Spanish? <laughs> it's only Spanish. I I tend to cut the white people out of my life because uh, they're racist. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, but um, yeah, all of your all of your friends and fan, all all of your friends, Colin. It's just like whatever ties you guys have to the Nazi party, right? Like, that's basically <laughs> it. I can't believe it. It's like, your grandfather was a Nazi too? No way! Oh, my God! <laughs> Let's go to Argentina and go visit them. Actually, you know what's funny? Oh, yeah, a lot of them are probably down in Argentina, actually. Um, a lot of, a lot of, I actually haven't thought about that. My, my, my last name is Stuckert. Yeah, my dad always used to always used to say, and I don't know if he's bullshitting. I don't know if he actually did this research, but he he always said that the city of Stuttgart in Germany is uh, our lineage goes back to that. But this is like pre Hitler, so like I, I'm, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I'm safe from the cancel mob because like. <laughs> <laughs> but what was life pre Hitler? Do we ever want to remember that? No. I mean, uh, <laughs> this is why you have a comedian on your podcast. <laughs> Yeah, so basically we get away with wow. this because as long as it comes out of your mouth, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we, it's like right, right. we have no culpability here. No, you're really like we don't. We have no association to him nor Puerto Ricans, no. and um, <laughs> dude, that's so funny. No, but um, yeah, tr it's funny when you tell stories about your dad because you remind. It's just that like that like working class person who just likes to bullshit because my dad does the same like he, he literally well they, i i don't trust a thing that comes out of his mouth sometimes well so it's not it's not about so my dad was an exaggerator yeah and you know the, like hyperbole right well like my buddy like a friend of mine brent for example like yeah. he tells really good stories but you know that yeah. every time he tells a story he's making shit up along the way cause, like, <laughs> because because he's trying to create a better story right so yeah, you yeah. don't you don't like think of him as a liar because like no. if it's like a he's real an thing embellisher. He's, yeah, yeah, he's an embellisher. He's just adding yeah. color. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, and well, you know, we got to keep as white as possible. We don't want it to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I can't. You uh, know what I call that? Like when they're embellishing, you're adding too much cream to those tacos. Okay. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. Too much cream and cheese. Way too much. You're making the. Those are the best parts of the taco. <laughs> you white. That's what you, 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 Aryan, you hey. Aryan bastard. <laughs> Colin's well, like the best part of the taco is the cream and the cheese. Right? Like, <laughs> no, what is and the that? steak though? Steak is red, so that's there's steak. Yeah. Is serious, that's solid. That's yeah, that that's is solid. Just, I'll yeah. give him that. I'll give him that. And, and and white meat is actually like not nutritious, so like yeah, and it's it can dry very, it's, it dries yeah. it out. Yeah, it's very yeah. easy to dry out. Yeah. No, but yeah. um, yeah, but that's a big thing I've noticed is like my my work my working relationships have become have be, like those are where I found the better people. Not people that like I just met like hanging out somewhere. You know what I well, mean? Well, you, yeah, you're you're talking also about how you meet. I'm not even thinking about that because, like, yeah, That's you're going to have. Well, but you're going to have what are those words? You're going to have um, generalizations about certain places you meet people, and it might be like a hundred people that you meet, and one of them is cool and that you want to hang out with. I'm just talking about from a relationship perspective. 
regardless of where I meet people or how I meet them, whatever, I generally only talk to people that I'm interested in and that are, can hang like that can hang, uh, you know, relatively on an intellectual level, but also on like a growth mindset slash like being interested in ideas level, you know, yeah. uh, there's just certain people I'm drawn to. I like people that smile a lot. Like that's why I like Natalie. Like I like people that <laughs> laugh a lot. Like I like people that are yeah. just gregarious and fun and like, you know, they, they, they can bring that out of me. Right. Sense of humor. Right. Right. They, like I don't like any negativity. Like I don't like negativity, yeah. uh, you know, about anything really. And so I try to avoid that generally. Same. I'm struggling with how to approach a relationship perspective because <clears throat> we're all so pressed for time. We all have our goals and all these things, right? And we're basically distracted by money and shiny object and distractions and technology and whatever. And I feel like so many of us, probably on accident, not we're not consciously choosing this, but a lot of us default to like my the shit that's right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. I'm giving up on cultivating those really deep, meaningful connections. And that's scary because if society does that more and more, it's going to be harder and less rare to find people that are even willing to do that investing. Yeah. And I think, I, I think I got to travel with people too. Like traveling is a way where you can get people out of their city and their routine oh, yeah. and like force yourself to do things together. So like, like, and I need to do that more. I know I've been putting that <laughs> off, but so I'll look into that and then. I think it's a big risk reward thing that you go through where it's like, I don't want to go hang out with someone. And then I wasted my time because they sucked. You know, it's like you want to you want. I think we're also I think especially now people are also trying to be more careful with their time because we're like we can get sucked into social media. We can get sucked into shit on TV. There's always something to watch. There's always yeah, but pe so people in person are getting like hang out with people in person. I feel like we're all at a disadvantage because we're not doing it as much. So like. Doing more of that yeah. is just always going to probably be better. It yeah. Seems like. Yeah. Doing the stuff in person is definitely a game changer because when you, I think because we're so, um, what word do I want to use here? We're so um, programmed to believe that we're supposed to be staying indoors and whatnot, right? Yeah. We're isolated. We're people, yeah, we're people isolated. are self isolating. Yeah. And they're finding it easier to isolate, even if they don't want to or have to. They're just like defaulting to it. Right. And so when you go out and you experience nature or people in general, even I, and maybe, I don't know if this is just a California thing, because this is what makes it hard as well, is that here in California, it really is its own country. Like yeah. I see people in other states now that don't even have to wear a mask. You know, they're out doing their own thing, you know, exercising their sovereignty. And we're still That's in California. Like it's just unbelievable. It's jail. Yeah. It feels like jail here. And it's well, like, and what what's heck? crazy is you guys are also paying the the the, the most out of anywhere <laughs> in the country you can live. You're paying Absolutely. the most. You're paying the highest rent. Like you're you're they're sucking you dry financially and yeah. physically and mentally. And it's like and I mean the Paul brothers are are moving. Did you hear that? Both of them are moving out of California. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, of course. Lo, lo, Logan Paul and uh, Paul, Jake Jake Paul, mm -hmm. right? Oh. And they're gonna they're gonna bring with them a lot of people. They're um, Elon is now here Elon. in Austin. Yeah. Elon moved, right? He's and moved his factory. Joe He's got Rogan a huge place too, right? out by the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Rogan's here. Mm -hmm. right? And I love seeing this. I, I, I love when I see this because I love when consolidated power structures get yeah. proven yeah. wrong, that their bad yeah. ideas and policies are, are ruining. And, and like, I love to see that the market is speaking, right? right. But it's crazy. So that's a good example. What, why do you guys stay there? And do you either you have plans independently? <clears throat> why don't you go first, Natalie? So I actually um, was thinking about probably uh, moving to Arizona or Utah just because mm -hmm. I love nature. I love to hike. I love to camp. Yep. And the people that I used to try to bring with me, they were not on that level. They were just like, oh, I have to get up at four in the morning to start that drive. And yeah. I, I'd be like, uh, yeah, I would do weekend warrior shit. Like I would w work a Monday through Friday job. And then I would go out to national parks, you know, over the weekend and make it back like on Sunday, nearly midnight, and then go back to work on Monday because I knew that that's what I love to do. But it was very hard to um, have the friends that I had at the time to really mm -hmm. want to participate with me in that. So it was a, it was a very lonely journey. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? I don't know who I'm going to go out with there now. And then in these times, I definitely can't do that on my own because there's all kinds of crazies out there, you know, unless I have a gun, but here in California, again, you know, like that kind of just, 
it's so frustrating. So I've thought about Arizona. I've thought about Utah. I've thought about Texas. But I feel like Texas, yeah, it's fun. It's beautiful. It can be a, a lot of fun. But I still need more nature. And for yeah. me, I love the desert. There's a lot of nature here. Is there? It's tons. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm. Yeah. we're looking to buy again. We're going to buy five to ten acres and probably bass drop. And um, you can just come work our farm for us if you want. I'm down. I love, I love I love animals and farms. Armando's going to be there herding the sheep. <laughs> Natalie, you have to fire back. Yes. You have to. No. <laughs> you have to fire she back. Free, she gets free room and board, and, you know, she gets amazing. You have to um, fire back on the Einsatz Gruppen. You have to. You have to fire back. <laughs> you have to. I'm Hispanic. Oh, it's because I'm Hispanic. Yeah. Yeah. You need to come with some German terms next time. Just be like, if you see the ice cap, you can see the I actually didn't know you were. I, I guess I thought. I guess it made sense you're Hispanic, but I mean, both yeah. of you are like what? You're white Hispanic, so it's hard to tell. A creamy? No, first I actually speak Spanish. That was my first language. Oh, okay. I didn't speak English until I was like nine. Really? Wow, you don't have an accent or anything. Mm -hmm. Good job. It's Amada, funny. Why are you staying there? Go ahead. Go um, ahead, Allie. Selling drugs. Well, besides that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, not besides that. That's my whole industry. Wait, um, who's echoing? Are you echoing, Armando? I don't think so. Is it me? Wait, Speak. Is it talking. me again? Yes. Talking. Talking. It's funny because it me. echoes on your end too. Wait. Let me I don't let hear me any mute echoing. my speaker. Wait. So tell me this. Do you hear the echo? Mute your speaker some more. So wait. Speaker. Here. How about this? You hear an echo. 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 Test. Test. Slightly. It's small. Now. Echo. Echo. No. It's it's almost like nothing. But when so I talk, you. no, so it's one of you, because when I talk, I hear myself through someone else's headphones. No, it's, we don't. I don't, I don't hear the echo anymore. I don't hear anything in yeah. regards to I, the there, there was a slight echo. I think it was through your, your end, but it was the ghost in the machine. It's messing with us. <laughs> so Amanda, why, why are you still in California, even though you have every reason to plan to live? And also here's, what's funny. You work remotely at this point, your money, every dollar that you earn could be going to, a, to live in a place that's way, way cheaper. No. <laughs> I pay five hundred dollars a month in rent. There's no place cheaper. In California, you're paying five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, in rent. We're, we're, How we're getting on earth. Yeah, well, we're getting so that's not the only thing you pay though. You still have food and living expenses and other things, right? Are right, you but like, even but, but that, that but, kind of but rent you is understand, not a like, yeah, exactly. Like with all those things on top of that, it's still <gasps> way cheaper. How did you manage to just pay five? It's it, it was uh you know one of those like you know when you get. Uh, help from like a, a family member who owns a home and you're like, all right, cool. We'll, we'll rent out one of the spaces there. So we're just, you know, I, I don't, we can I don't, stick together. Exactly. And that's wow. why we, that's why bad bunny is taking over the world in the, the music charts. Who, who's bad bunny. I can't, oh. I don't, I oh. don't yeah. explain it to him. Oh wait, he is Spanish, right? I keep, I, every time you say bad bunny, I think of that girl that was on Dr. Phil. Oh. It's bad baby. Oh, God. damn. At least I was close. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, one of yours, Colin. Come on. That's yeah, one of the poor she's whites. She's not Spanish, right? She's not Spanish. That's one of the man. poor whites. You got to you gotta stick together, man. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just glad she's actually monetizing her second of fame. Most people that are like one hit fame wonders don't monetize it. I mean, I'm pretty yeah. sure she's a millionaire at this point. Is that the one who was like yeah. cash me outside? Cash yes. me outside. She was yeah. a meme oh that is God. now a multimillionaire. So good yeah, for her. Yeah, she she started in OnlyFans. She she's got everything now. Damn. She's, I mean, she had a music career before that for some reason. She was signed to Capitol Records. Maybe I Wait, what? Are fans. you serious? Yeah. yeah, not before the um, not before the Doctor Phil episode. What did you say, Natalie? I said maybe I should start an OnlyFans. This shit. Like, people <laughs> are making some serious money sitting on. Be careful. Space. Be careful. They're like OnlyFans pimps now, and they'll be like, "I'll manage you." And well, then guess get what? A single I I know somebody that does that, and they yeah. made ten thousand dollars. First what, month. on pimping yeah. or sitting on cakes? Probably pimping. Wait, sitting, sitting on, on cake? cakes? I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Those so... people who sit on cakes. And oh like, my God. They have, it, like, I love stuff. the internet. There's, there's oh. all kinds of fetishes. And I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, what in... Yeah, oh, you could man. actually you could actually have an OnlyFans account that is not actual any sexual or nudity and just yeah. weird fetish stuff. Yeah. So like, yeah, you should totally look into that. And But mm -hmm. what from the way they're doing it is they have these scripts set up where they take guys through these scripts and they basically the thesis is a lot of these guys go on things like OnlyFans because they, they need they they're lonely. They want somebody yeah. to talk to. 
And it's what like they a do, personalized you, girlfriend experience online. It is. They want a girlfriend. Yeah. So they, mm -hmm. they, they charge you. They have this, like, this funnel where every so often certain messages, like they, you sell them something and you like send mm -hmm. them a video or whatever. And all it's scripted out. All of it's like automated. I mean, it's not automated. Like, in fact, hmm. I mean, nobody knows what I'm talking about. So it's safe. But yeah. the guy that's doing it, it is, is, is the one texting. Right, and, and a, talking to these guys, and they all the think they're talking, copywriter. <laughs> they're, they all think they're talking to her, but they're not. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and for the most part, that I mean, like in the old world, that's how people, you know, set that's what up phone sex was too. But yeah, I mean, and and that's how people set up liaison with prostitutes back in the day. You know, it's like you spoke to a John or the you spoke to the the pimp first. You know, I read a whole. There's a whole book on this that you guys should read. It's a. It's kind of amazing. It's called Pimp. It's by um. Oh my god! It's just called Pimp, it, and it's a story about a pimp from like the '40s through the '70s, I believe. Well, you know what's funny? Why do people use the phrase "Oh yeah, you're a pimp"? Like almost as like a uh, positive thing. I mean, it was like, a bad people, thing. People don't really realize though what it was. It was exploitation of of women for the most part, you know. And and a Ooh. pimp is normally a a prostitute who has now flipped the game. Basically, that's what a pimp is. But wait a, a minute, a pimp is also a prostitute. They Hold are. on. But a lot of Hold on. guys. I want to present yes. this question, guys, because like you said, that's exploitation of women, but I mean anyone. Do not do well, women it can, do be, women, it can be willing. Wait, wait. Do not do women not ex, do not some women exploit themselves. Sure. Yeah, of course. I right? mean, well, I think yourself. the derogatory thing about pimp is like generally you see like the old HBO specials where it's like the dude like will beat 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 the there girls female and, you know, pimps like, out use there. intimidation and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, see, but that's a double pimps. standard. That's a double standard because if it's a female pimp, then it's like, oh, she's just a boss bitch and she's just owning her sexuality and her femininity. And it's like, <laughs> well, well, so I'm I'm using the word pimp as somebody that basically is exploiting dehumanizing people, people people under yeah. and then controlling the money and the, the whatever. It's kind of like almost like a, a serfdom indentured yes. sla sl slave type of situation. Yeah, well, you don't you don't make mm -hmm. any money. You literally just. As a, as or like a, you make like the bare minimum, and they control the money, and you make literally like... no, nothing, and they they make they house you and quote unquote protect you and feed. Right, you so them. it's like an indenture servant. Right, I'm yep. sure yep. I'm sure there are females that treat other females that way too. I'm just saying, I'm yeah. trying to play devil's advocate because oh, no, I'm, not, no, I'm no. not talking about men. I'm just talking about like a pimp. Like, what is the job title right. of a pimp? Like, right. that's what it is. Right. That's I worked right. for a Korean lady in Studio City who was my pimp, basically. And uh, <laughs> she was like, don't take breaks and don't eat lunch. Oh, you and mean, I was like, you were an employee? Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. She was <laughs> like, like, you're welcome. Yeah. But yeah. instead of selling your body, she was selling your labor. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Selling your labor to patrons. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And and like she like scheduled me on a Sunday uh, when we were closed and she was like, "Well, I'm I'm having a private party." And I was like, oh, "Okay, so they're going to be tipping and stuff." She's like, "No. Also, you're not going to get paid." I'm like, well, "Why would I You know I don't <laughs> like this place, right?" Like <laughs> like I don't okay, this isn't my so passion. We're uh this has been a very eclectic conversation. Oh, you yeah. want to keep Natalie all day even though um, she probably has the time because she's not going to go outside. Today. I'm not going to go anywhere, guys. <laughs> I'm going to go wash my car and keep it clean, even though I'm not going to drive it anywhere. All right. <laughs> you're going to have, yeah, you're going to bond with your car today. So an yeah. inanimate object. Yeah. I know. mean, uh, there's it's a fetish stuff. for that too. You know, I'm just yeah, saying, it, like you could catch up. Tide, yeah, it, it's called tidying up with um, what's that lady? The Marie Kondo. The little, Marie Kondo. Yeah, where it's like. It doesn't give me joy anymore, and then you just put away or the stuff you keep. Yeah, you you could you could become somebody that you throw away stuff on camera and char charge for it. Oh yeah, and like people people are getting or, their like they're vi they're vicariously throwing away things that so they don't actually have to throw away things. Yeah, right. or, or that's PG, exactly what that is. That's or PG you only just like fans. dress like Marie Kondo and do uh, it. Yeah, you know? yeah, you could literally oh, just be in like a room of rubber bands, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna add another one to the room we'll see what happens dude the shit is weird on the internet like uh, there are people that like they're like people can just there's there's a whole subsection for people who eat where it's like is. yeah eat a pizza now the, eat lady a whole eats pizza. Crawfish. Mm. the lady who eats crawfish and smacks her lips and it just yeah, she's got a huge youtube channel yeah i I've know yeah. yeah and and only fan dude you could have there's probably like a group of people who just want to like Get off to you reading chicken to chicken soup to, for the teenage soul or something. I would do like, that. I would do read. I love to read. I will freaking read. Well, that could be books. a YouTube channel at least. Yeah. Maybe it's an OnlyFans. If you want, if you need a a entrepreneurially minded person to help you with that, are you trying to pimp me, Colin? <laughs> 
you pimp it yourself. I, I just, I help you with the, pr- the back end process. That was going to no, no I, I, I'm not. A, I wouldn't that? be a pimp at all. I, I'm a um, enabler of entrepreneurship is what I am. Pimp so. oh, okay. get it. That's just a fancier way of saying pimping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's called entrepreneurialism, not pimping. Well, <laughs> it, it's it's where the money comes from, and if whether they're working, whether they're working for themselves or not, that's the difference. Uh-huh. You right. Know? So right. You know, yeah. it's a hard life being a pimp. This has been but... a solid episode so far. I don't, I don't think we talked night. about. I don't think we talked about how to be a better human, though. I think there's nuggets in there. <laughs> there's some nuggets in there. At, at the don't very get least, pimped. Yeah, you can take everything we said and just do the opposite. And <laughs> be okay. Um, where can uh, we'll we'll have to do more of these? So, Natalie, I'll I'll force you to come on every, at least a couple times a month. Yeah, I'd love we'll to. to. We'll call this, call this a, a, the Three Stooges segment or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Something. Yeah. The Colin's going to just threaten. The Three Musketeers sounds better, okay? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Three Co- Colin's just going to threaten to call ICE and un- not realizing you're a, an American citizen. <laughs> right. You thanks, Colin. Yeah. 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 I, I've already I've already doxed Armando multiple times. Yeah. To know. Puerto Rico, you know? <laughs> They're gonna deport me back there. No, Dox Dox is where I reveal your public information to the. To the you son of a bitch! Wow. <laughs> oh my god, that's gonna do. That's gonna be a. a there's gonna be a uh, like a jail a, a jailable offense for that eventually. That's gonna oh, be there, a jailable there already offense. should be, dude. Like revealing yeah. Yeah, people's public crazy. information on the internet and then like other yeah. people come after them because they what? said something about that's abortion inciting, that you would disagreed with. Right, that's like inciting yeah. violence, inciting whatever. Yeah, it's so, crazy. Um, it's crazy. One point I wanted to make that was really funny. Isn't it funny how every single topic that so much of the world takes so seriously and like get so enraged about and yell and scream and fire people about, like if you just approach it and you laugh about it, it just like is meaningless. Yep. Because it's ridiculous. Right? That's how freaking it's stupid like, it is. It's, it's almost ridiculous. like the counter force. It's like people that they take it really, they, they get crazy about it. Yeah. And it, it's so, cr- it's so ridiculous how crazy they get about it that the conveiling like counter force is like the fact that you can you also should laugh about it like it's a joke at the same time because well, no it's one a weird paradox the ridiculous part is the fact that like we exist that's fucking ridiculous so it's like yeah, anything within sure. that it's like you shouldn't take anything seriously right and yeah. that that has been like as it's especially... well you're already winning being alive is winning so like Literally. everything else doesn't matter i mean even if you're alive and losing like it's ridiculous <laughs> like right. well but you you aren't losing because you're alive yeah, exactly. Right, unless you're literally like, you're you're on a raft being. I know a few people who would like, disagree. <laughs> no, you like, know I'd what? much rather be dead. Th- no, there's like that's something actually kind of cool. I tell people, especially like with the numerology stuff, I'll tell people like, yeah. there's no such thing as failure. There's no such thing as loss. It's all opportunity for growth. Unless always. you quit, right? Unless always. you quit, yeah. Unless you unless give up, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what's you know, and, and it's just like you have to understand that everything is just crazy. Everything. Everything right. that we do as human beings, even the fact that we constructed societies that like even nature now is is considered like cities and urban ur- urban areas versus rural. That's considered nature now. It's human nature. It's, it's like people are like, oh, you know, like I that's why like you have when everybody stopped going outside, you had deer coming into where, like the city centers because it's, it's just we're like right. integrating. Yeah, this is all insane. This is all insane. Yeah, well, it's it's not nature. You, it's man made. But. Right, right. Which is now we, we are part of nature. So even the man-made things are considered na- we, we, they're be- Te- yeah. Becoming- well, yeah, te- technically, but we those the things we created are killing us, right? So oh yeah, you know, there's uh, it's it, we all it's almost like we created this parasite, a man-made parasite that is then attacking us, and most people are completely unaware that that's even happening. Yeah. And so I mean, this could all just, literally go in an instant. So it's like, stop taking things so seriously. Right. Just, just, I, you know, it's like, you just Create have relationships, to... build relationships. Like life is short. Yeah. That's everything because that is the most impact. That's the most important thing for humans. Yeah. Yet our culture has, you believe that it's just money and power and fame. Yeah. You know, but guess what? I've thought about this a lot. If I grew, blew up my online brand and I had this, like all this clout, right? A lot of those people that don't reach out to me as much, what do you think they'd start doing? I'm reaching a little lost on that. Yeah, what? I was going to say reaching out to you. Oh, if you blew up. I see what you mean. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. Would, they would all yeah. want to hang out all the time right. because now, oh, now right. they see me as like basically a, a social vessel, opportunity, a clout, currency. a clout opportunity, basically. Yep. Right. right. But then, but then it's like my mind is 
well, now it's fake and I don't want you to fucking reach out to me. Right. Because that's the way I am. And so what do you see that a lot of rich, successful people have? They have a bunch of fucking fake people around them and they feel lonely and isolated. Mm -hmm. I think, so that, I think that's, also I that's think the, the problem with that. The biggest, most important thing is cultivating, you know, happiness in the moment, regardless of who you have around you, regardless of, because I think at some point, nothing external matters. And you just you just gotta yes. have to be happy with yourself and happy with regardless of who comes in and out and regardless <clears> of, <throat> of that's where it's like, um, re, what is it? Releasing your expectations of outcomes. You know? Absolutely, but there there are there are certain biological imperatives to which becoming a Buddha for most people is not practical. Yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah. so the Buddhist answer is okay. Reach nirvana by renouncing everything literally make it so your brain doesn't even think about things right mm -hmm. that's like the buddhist pursuit right mm -hmm. but that is it, it it can it can pursuing it can like have benefits like we should all try to control our mind and we should meditate and we should do these things mm -hmm. but for 99.999 percent of humanity we're not going to become the buddha meditate under a tree for four years and reach enlightenment or whatever it is yeah right right so we have to understand the principles of our biology human connection is integral the most punishing torture you can give a human is what Armando, you know, this, we talked about this. Yeah. Loneliness. Solitude, like solitude, solitary Forever. confinement, uh -huh. Sol yeah. but even like, I mean, imagine six years locked up in a room. You don't talk, talk to anybody like that's, that's, fu I mean, that is the worst thing you can do to a human animal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, okay. I think what's what the worst part about that is when it's because it's not by choice. You're in jail. You're no, not but, allowed no, no, to no, leave. No, 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 that, that's nothing to do with it. It's not choice. I think, not. I think it if, does. If you self isolate for a year, Mm -hmm. and you can have the choice to not do it, you will still eventually probably kill yourself or have some major psychological trauma. You, your biology cannot handle it. But it's what like, if, it's what like if, if I inject if I inject um, arsenic like into my body or, or some poison, after a certain enough dose, my body dies. I mean, look right? at you what happened. That. Suicide rates went up during this whole pandemic. Well, of course, they're at yeah, the highest. The, but, more right? people, do you know more people kill themselves than have all, that have all Absolutely. died in all, all wars in the history of, of civilization? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like that's insanity. But what if you were, you know, and that's another thing where it's like people were ordered to stay inside and their jobs left and things like that. What if you had a, you know, when it comes to solitude, what if you took your own personal, you know, sovereignty and was like, I'm, I just want to be alone for a year. I did that. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> okay. But zero human contact for a year. Oh yeah. That's right? not, yeah. These things are about dose. So, what does it mean when, when they say the doses or the poison is in the dose? What does that mean? Uh, how much you get. How much determines you, what? What determines your death, whether you're going to die. Yeah, how bad or good or uh -huh. neutral it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I work out, it's a positive stress, but it's actually mm -hmm. stressed on my body. If I, you can train yourself to death. You could do, you basically hit rhabdomyolysis. Your kidneys break down because your muscle fibers break down. It breaks down your kidneys. You die. Right. Mm -hmm. You can drink yourself to death with just water. We all understand this, yes. right? There was actually a water woman poisoning. that killed herself. There, mm -hmm. there was a woman that killed herself in one of those radio win a wee challenges so because she drank I, so much water to try to pee so that she mm -hmm. killed herself. Okay. Yeah. It's in the dose. So my point is like, there's, it's a, it's a spectrum. You choosing to like be a loner or be a hermit or whatever, like very, very few people, even if there are some that can do it with zero human contact, I don't even know if mm -hmm. it's even biologically possible, but it might be for some. But they're like the, the like they're probably have a mental defect to be honest. There's a far cry between choosing to be isolated and, and more solitary than literally not having an ounce of human contact for a year on end. Right. Or or think about this, even not even like seeing or interacting or engaging, not even like reading. Like you, let's say you just lock yourself in a room for a year, you would go crazy. I think. Of course. Because I, if I you don't... read something, who wrote that thing you're reading? A person. <laughs> If you watch something or like whatever, you're still right. kind of getting human interaction in a way of where it's not just like your brain locked up to itself. Right. Yeah. Right. Can I, can I yeah. share something with you guys? Yep. So my stepdad actually got COVID. All right. And he ended up because my mom's a very strong personality. She like forced him to lock himself in the, in the master bedroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was not allowed to communicate like to have contact with us we had communication with him here and there but at the very beginning because he was so weak and tired all he did was he was bedridden 
it wasn't yeah. until like the 10th day that he started finally coming out of that slump. Mm -hmm. And he, he was, I want to say he was going crazy. Like he was, mm -hmm. he was so sad and depressed and he would call us and he would FaceTime us and he'd be like, please don't leave me alone. Do not stop talking to me because I feel really lonely. I feel scared. I feel like I want to yeah. die. This was yeah. by the 12th day. We mm -hmm. actually ended up having to open slightly the door and the windows so that he would not feel so boxed in. My mm -hmm. stepdad now has severe PTSD from being enclosed 100%. in a room. I had PTSD yeah. from being in jail for 30 hours. <laughs> really? I, I, no, I'm serious. Like PTSD oh is not, it's not about the severity. Yeah, it's about, it's, you're right, it's yeah. about the shock and the, like the brain, like not being able to comprehend it. Like I would have nightmares about it for a while. I, I mean, I, it's been wow. years, but like that, that last yeah. thing, right? And so this is the human animal. And this also is a, a testament. I mean, I could literally rant on about what you just told me for hours on end, right. but this is the danger of listening con to consolidated power structures that are now, uh, that have so manipulated and fear mongered the masses to believe that they need to take some experimental vaccine that need, they should mask their kids. Their kids should be locked up. They should stay right. home. Like all of these things are contrary to nature. They right. are destroying lives. We're going to see that more people died from suicide probably during this time than died from the very thing that everyone tells you to be afraid of. Right. Absolutely. It makes me sick. Yeah. And we do have to go. I got, I got pizza. The kids are waiting. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, that is, I, yeah. I haven't had pizza in a while. That's a good reason. That's a great reason. About it. Pizza's so fucking appreciate awesome. everyone com coming on. I uh, appreciate you, Natalie, Armando, Thank you know, you okay. You showed you. up. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we, everybody share where uh everybody can follow you this will be live uh probably in a week or two and everybody we appreciate you listening to our shenanigans again mm -hmm. nothing here should be taken as life or financial advice or and, and most of it is comedy and for fun this is just for legal Dis purposes disclaimer 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 yeah yeah mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. yeah 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 um people could find me on power and numbers and that's with the number zero instead of the letter o on Instagram. P0W, correct? P number zero, yes. Right, w. zero, mm -hmm. W, yep. W-E-R cool. in numbers all together. And then Armando, Armando you, don't even, you don't even post in your social, your Instagram, so like- I know, I'm trying, to, you? I, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to do an audit. Armando Rivera Comedy on Instagram, uh, He'll post YouTube. in 2022. You can see it when it comes out. It'll be the right. most amazing post ever. Exactly. <laughs> It'll it's be gonna one be, Instagram post. We'll, we'll do a pre-launch for your Instagram post. We'll have a sign-up list to be able be, to get first early access to your Instagram post. It's going to be an All Lives Matter post. Um, wow. All Lives Matter? Even better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> I hope that P I hope you Wait, have diarrhea how do all lives pizza. So, I don't even get it. How could all lives matter be controversial? Does that not show you what's so stupid about our culture? Like that's just one example of how stupid people are. None of this matters. No, no, because all li because when you say all lives, that means all of them are there. So you're not actually excluding anybody. But that's somehow political? You people are idiots. Sorry. People are Whoa. idiots. You people, oh my oh, god. No. What does this mean? What does oh, this mean? Oh, great. Right, right. right. So now when I say you people and I'm talking about people that are dumb, now somehow that means Oh man. Actually, wait, Whoa. how does that mean anything? Because this is what there, pizza does to your brain. There was all Lack colors that were, that were like pizza. on these different ends of the political spectrum. Like that doesn't even identify it. There was a lot of really dumb white people saying a lot of really dumb things in twenty twenty. I think it. I think it's. I think the futile thing. Does that mean all white people? Like, I, like it's so stupid. I think this the futile simplistic think, thinking is so dumb. I think the futile thing is trying to get your here. Brain here's a good. Here's a good. In a place a, to understand it. Yes. Well, that too. Mess. But guess. But guess yeah. what, Armando? A lot of terrorists are guys. Uh huh. So that's your fucking fault, you male bastard. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly where we is are. Is the lot is the logic any different? Is the logic no. any different? Explain to me if we no. if we map this out with a math equation, is it any different? But when have people not been stupid? I mean, there's yes, always a very. I mean, we question. can all admit right. we've been stupid at one point in our life or another, or many. Yeah, but but then like yeah, you, but you talk about like, people as a whole. When have people not been stupid? Right, the madness of crowds and they're idiots. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's I, where absolutely. you have to understand just in your place and time. The problem is they're given a microphone with things like the internet. People mm -hmm. that would generally, I mean, not to say that the people with microphones, the politicians, the, and whatever, the, I mean, those, they're idiots too most of the time, mm -hmm. but like most, people that really should have no opinion whatsoever <clears throat> publicly, 
are able to just shout from the rooftops their stupidity, mm -hmm. right? And just like, then you have Dunn and Kruger where most people think they're smarter or more skilled than they are. Dunn and Kruger shows that people think they're way better than they are. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy. So, yeah, I mean, all those narratives are just so stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, the idea, even, even racism is stupid. It's the amount of melanin in your skin. Like, yeah, but, it's so stupid. And, then, and just race. It's so stupid. Classify. There's one race. It's human race. Just classifying human beings by skin color is, is, is new in like the past. But it's race. Years. But it's that so itself new. is racist. Of course. So when you talk about identity groups and you say my people, this people, you, whatever, like it's, it's literally, there's, there's just humans or there's animals. Mm-hmm. So what we should be doing is we should be fighting for the other species because we're being so speciousists right? amongst our species. <laughs> yes, we are. This shit that's is actually, never... That's actually a thing. They're talking about how not we shouldn't use certain words because it's specious to the animals. This shit is that's never like going to go thing. away. I don't think you no. understand. Let, yeah. Go back. Go back as far as you want. Go back 20 years ago. People have been idiots forever. There's always going to be something. You know, whether it's about anything, about, you know, parenting or race relations or... There's a lot of uh, very dumb people. So, most, yeah. yeah, the mainstream is always there's very nothing you can There's nothing you can do but educate yourself. That's it. Well, yeah. that's the thing. People don't want to educate themselves. They don't want to read a book. They don't want to take the time right. to do the research. Oh, well. they, don't do the t they don't want to take the time to empower themselves. Okay, people I are just reposting best... shit left and right without doing yeah. their freaking research. They take I everything think... at face value like it is actually truth, like it's actually fact, and it's not. And I, I think you no. have to have Absolutely better self-awareness of when those things creep into your mind and get you upset that other people aren't, aren't doing better. It's, you just can't. You just can't be like, why aren't it's, you doing better? It's the hardest thing I've had to accept. Yeah, you literally. I, my adult life is accepting that b before it was fine because it didn't affect me. 2020 has created material effects in my life to where I can't even fly with my kids because my son's not going to wear a mask for three or four hours. And he shouldn't have to. He's a child. He, he shouldn't. He's, but whether it's a child that has affected adults. us. That has limited us. And this shit's going to go on for who knows how long, right? And it's right. materially affecting my family. Before, I didn't care because I can always go somewhere and leave and it doesn't really affect my day-to-day -day life. I don't have to pay attention to it. This has been the first time in my lifetime to where government, stupidity, and incompetence has affected me and my family on a physical level. And this is where it's interesting. You can't just think about things when they don't affect you. And I think a lot of people learn right. that this year. You have to think about things this is where you have to be as empathetic and as self-aware as possible. And right. you got to do that, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, you got to put yourself in everyone else's shoes, even the people you disagree with. And that will help you cultivate a better understanding of things where you'll have less emotional responses to things. Well, I understand that they're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and what can you do? You know, not much. That's but, the I shitty mean, part. You, you can educate. You can, you, and that's what we do with this podcast. Like, yeah. That's well, what we do with stuff. Yeah. But, do they, do people want to learn? That's the thing. The people that want to no, learn are going to show up. The people who don't. don't, they're not. Yeah. Right. That's and why so, that's the, that's what's great about. That's why I picked podcasting because it's a very soapbox thing where like, I really don't care to go person to person and be like, I'm here to help you. I, I would like to, but not yeah, everybody wants that. People can't no. help until they're open to helping. I mean, no, you, could so, have, you could have every fact in the book. Facts have been shown to actually make people dig into their beliefs more, even if their beliefs are counter to yeah. like literal facts that we can prove. Right? That's why like, podcasting and YouTube and putting out content is awesome because the people who want to show up will show up to your mm -hmm. stuff. Right. Yeah, that's, but that actually you know, creates divide. That's the problem. That's why I quit talking about, about health content because the people that need the health content the most, they're not showing up watching my videos. They're not like typing in things to find. They're literally watching – you know, influencers and stu cat videos. Or like, oh what, my I don't God, know, don't get started on does. the influencer stuff. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. next episode, yeah. we'll talk about influencers yeah. and how yeah. they're ruining your life and how they're all fake. They are, and they're not right. celebrities. <laughs> so my family's literally at the pizza place. You guys are keeping me from my pizza right now. Oh, oh we are. Shit. <laughs> Responsibility and ownership, Colin. Yeah. Okay. Ownership. Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> I'm taking ownership that my guests are insensitive to my time and I've just accepted oh, okay. oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I chose to stick around and talk. You're right. That's my responsibility. Okay. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for Thank coming, you. Natalie. Peace Bye. out. Bye.